This is me. Just kidding. This is me. My name is Amanda, and welcome to my podcast where I will be talking about pop culture, music, film, drama, and fan videos. Hello, and welcome back to my channel, Always Popular. I'm Amanda, your host, and let's get into this week's episode. Around this time, in June, 14 years ago, we lost one of the biggest names in music history and pop culture, Michael Jackson. It's crazy to believe it's been almost 15 years since he passed away, and since then, multiple people have said real music will never be the same again, or people believe that music has gone downhill since he passed away. To be honest, if music has changed for the worse, I don't think it's because the king of pop left. I think it's because music is changing and the new generation of artists today lack natural music skills and are annoying as fuck. However, today we can celebrate the heart and soul of what MJ left behind. So this week, we can celebrate Michael Jackson, iconic but never forgotten. Sadly, if you're under the age of 10, you might not know who Michael is or the impact he had in music. Naturally, everyone knows who he is, what he's done, and how popular and influential he became in the world of music. Even if you were a super fan, you would still know his music and dance moves. Born as Michael Joseph Jackson on August 29th, 1958, he grew up in Gary, Indiana as the eighth sibling out of 10 of his family members alongside with his brothers, Jackie, Tito, Marlon, Jeremaine, and Randy, and three of his sisters, Janet, Rebbe, and LaToya. Unfortunately, Marlon's twin brother passed away after being born. In 1964, Michael and his brother Marlon joined the family band that their father, Joe Jackson, created. All the brothers, except for Randy, were better known as the Jackson Five back in the 60s. Michael, as the youngest member, was then put as the lead singer of the band in 1965. The band became very successful and made an impact in Motown music. They had signed with Steel Town Records in 1967 and released two singles. They became the first group to debut with four consecutive number one hits on the Billboard with hits like ABC, I Want You Back, The Love You Save, and I'll Be There. They achieved 16 top 40 hits and released four studio albums with the most successful being Destiny and Triumph. The band became cultural figures in Motown music as their songs ABC and I Want You Back were among the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame's 500 songs that shaped rock and roll, sold over 100 million records worldwide, and were honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. They defined black American music as a commercial entity longer than anyone else. They were classified as the original boy band as many fans tried to bombard the band, had to be escorted by the police, and every fangirl tried to jump over seats to get closer on stage. By the time the Jackson 5's Greatest Hits album was released, Michael's first debut album, Got To Be There, was released on January 24, 1972. The album included some covers, including Michael's version of Rock and Robin. In between the years of his second album, Ben, that was released in 1972 to his fourth album, Forever Michael, in 1975, he was struggling to have creative control in music, so his dad terminated his his contract with Motown, then moved him over to Epic Records. It wasn't until his fifth album, Off the Wall, was released in August of 1979 until his real musical breakthrough happened. With the hit songs like Don't Stop Till You Get Enough, Rock With You, Off the Wall, and She's Out of My Life, the album is a historical landmark and was hailed as a big milestone during the disco era. The album is still widely considered as one of the greatest albums of all time, even if it wasn't as commercially successful as his other albums. The album has influenced newer artists of, of this generation like The Weeknd, Justin Bieber, and Beyonce. The album got praised for Michael's transition from his previous music and the album now has sold over 20 million copies worldwide and helped Michael get his first three number one hit songs. He also became the first solo artist to have four singles from the same album to reach the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 and as of 2021, the album has sold over 9 million copies in just the US. And if that wasn't enough, Thriller, his sixth studio album, turned everything up to the next level. Surprisingly, in his personal life, he actually wasn't happy around the time this was released. In November 1982, Thriller became a massive phenomenon. The album set incredibly high standards with his music, music videos, and promotions that influenced producers and choreographers. 
This was the period of time that he debuted his signature moonwalk dance. The success gave him an unprecedented level of cultural significance for a Black American artist. He broke racial barriers and got a lot of playtime on MTV to the point where the impact of his music videos gave him a special recognition award everyone knows today as the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award in 1991. His dancing got so praised it popularized street dances and got mainstream attention. He was as big as Fred Astaire. His music videos, Billie Jean, Beat It, and Thriller, are credited for transforming music videos into a serious art form. The album won a record breaking eight Grammys and American Music Awards. It's the second best selling album in the U.S. with over 30 million copies sold and is the best selling album of all time with sales over 70 million copies worldwide. After the phenomenon Thriller came out, Bad, his seventh studio album, was released on August 31st, 1987, and this one album had made music history as well. The album had gotten praise for its polished production and his vocals. The album is considered one of the greatest albums of all time by many publications. By the time, he was considered the most popular African American artists in entertainment alongside Elvis and the Beatles. The album had the hit songs like Bad, The Way You Make Me Feel, Man in the Mirror, Smooth Criminal, and many others. With this release, he became the first artist to have the best-selling album worldwide two years in a row in 1987 and 1988. He was also the first artist to hold the top two selling albums simultaneously. Also, his Bad Tour, his first solo tour, became the highest grossing solo tour of the 1980s with over $125 million made. The album won Best Engineered Recording. Flash forward to four years later, Dangerous was released as his eighth studio album. By November 1992, the album had reportedly sold 15 million copies worldwide and was the best-selling album of that year internationally. By now, he was considered a bona fide megastar. With this album, it was considered an artistic change for Michael and it introduced underground sounds to mainstream audiences. The album included scat singing and finger snapping throughout the album. It also incorporated multiple different styles of music like new, jack, swing, R&B, pop, and rock music. And if you predicted this sentence, he did get nominated for four Grammys for this album too, and he received an Grammy Legend Award as well. Also, his single, Black or White, got some love for being nominated for Best Single. Also, one thing I do personally like is that he donated all the profits from his Dangerous Tour, which grossed over $100 million to charities. In 1995, he released his Grace Hits album and overall ninth studio album, History, Past, Present, and Future. The album came out in June of 95. Him and Janet did a duet called Scream, which became a top five hit, and he had the notorious B.I.G., Shaquille O'Neal, and Slash on this album as guest appearances as well. During this time, the media was very negative of him and started accusing Michael of horrible actions in his personal life. He had previously released a song called Leave Me Alone, which was targeted towards the media. His final and tenth album was called Invincible, and it was released on October 30th, 2001. This album also incorporated the notorious B.I.G. and Slash again and then also included legendary rocker Carlos Santana. The album became his fifth number one album. The album had the songs Cry, You Rock My World, and Butterflies as singles. However, this was one album he refused to tour due to personal conflicts with Tommy Mottolo, who had signed him to Sony Music Entertainment. Anyway, nearly a decade later, in 2009, he was planning on doing a comeback residency tour called This Is It. It was supposed to be between July 2009 to March 2010 to support his This Is It album and was choreographed by Kenny Ortega. However, when June 2009 came around, it was reported on June 25th he had passed away. Way. The world was in shock, and so was I. This is it tour was called the greatest tour that never happened, and his memorial service was unbelievable. As it has been reported that his live memorial service that was held at the Staples Center was seen by more than 2 billion people worldwide and became the most watched non-sports televised broadcast in history. And according to Nelson Soundscan, about 31 million Americans watched his funeral. I guess you can say Michael was popular in life and death and that no one compares to the impact he had on the world. He seemed to be very loved by millions of people, truly iconic but never forgotten. He is still very missed after 14 years later. Once again, thanks for listening and watching, and you'll hear me in the next episode.